Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE test. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. I'm holding in my hand the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 128 and today is our day number 23 today is our lesson number 23 page number 128 please turn to it and read the problem to yourself I'm not going to read it to you it's the problem number 3 that I'm solving or rather problem number 2 it says at store T the sales in 2007 were, were what percentage of the sales in 2008? That's all. And the graph, uh, rather the chart, the table, is given to us on the previous page, on page 127. So the question here is, sales in 2007 were what percentage of the sales in 2008. The very first thing you notice is that nobody is asking us for the absolute amount. They are not asking you what the figures are for this particular year or that particular year. We are looking for a relative change. We are not interested, we are not interested in the actual exact figure. So figuring out, figuring out the exact amount, dollar amount for 2007 and 2008 figuring out the exact dollar figure for 2007 and 2008 before we do the percentage changes here would be a colossal waste of time would be a colossal waste of time but I'm not going to put the word colossal on the blackboard because I don't know how to spell it would be a waste of time we are only interested in relative figures. We are only interested in relative change. Relative change, i.e., that is, i.e., percentage change. So the thing to do here is to pretend plug in a number for 2007. We want to see the sales in 2007s were what percentage of the sales in 2008. Just plug in some numbers and, and do the things that we have to do and then we'll figure out what percentage it works out be at the end. What would be a nice number to plug in for 2007? Since it's a percentage problem, a nice easy number to plug in in any percentage problem is 100. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. The sales in 2007 were $100. Now, what does the problem tell us that happens from 2007 to 2008 at store T? Well, for that we have to turn the page, go to the previous page, page 127. On bottom of page 127, there is a chart. Look at, look at the store T and it tells us in the last column, I'm going to point it out to you right here. The store T right here at the very last row, very last row in this column percentage change from 2007 and 2008, it says negative 8, which means the sales dropped by 8%. Sales dropped by 8% from 2007 to 2008 at store T. So, if we're going to pretend that 2007 is $100, we are looking at a drop of 8%. What is 8% of 100? Well, that's very easy. That was the whole point, which is why we plugged in 100 here. Otherwise, if you figure out, if you if you try to figure out the exact figure of 2007, you're going to end up wasting your time doing the work on 2000, starting from 2006, because this is the only way you can figure out. As a matter of fact, I take everything back here. Bloody hell, there are no figures. There are no dollar figure givens at all 
to us. So it is not possible, even if you wanted to figure out the exact dollar figure for 2007, there are no dollar figures given for 2006, so it's impossible. That's it. So this is the only way. So in 2007, if you were to pretend that it's $100, a drop of 8% would represent $8, so it's 2008, it becomes $92. Now the question is, sales in 2007 were what percentage of the sales in 2008? Well, let's find out, okay? We already know now it is $92. I need the room. I need the room, so I'm going to figure out, ta raise the, the top part here. And watch what happens. So now the question, and so the, now the question boils down to is this. 2007 is $100. Sales in 2007 which is $100. Question is $100 is what percentage of the sales in 2008 which we found out is $92. So the question now boils down to question now boils down to sales in 2007 which is $100 is what percent of 92? That's the question of oh, not 92 percent. Is what percent of 92? I meant to put question mark there, and I was supposed to pay attention. So let's do it together. We're going to convert this this uh, uh, sentence into an equation and solve for the unknown. Again, I need the room, so we need to raise all of it. Whenever you're doing a percentage problem, it's always a good idea to translate each word one by one individually slowly so that you don't miss anything which is what we're going to do here 100 100 is is means equals is means equal what how do we represent what in an algebraic equation what means unknown and what's the traditional way of showing the unknown representing the unknown you can use any letter you want but the convention dictates tradition dictates that I use x to represent unknown what does percentage mean What does percentage mean? Or better yet, percent. What does percent mean? Well, how do we translate percent when we tra transforming it into an algebraic equation? Percent means exactly what it says. Percent means per 100. Per 100. That's where the word cent, cent comes from. That's where the word century comes from. Per 100, which is translated as 1 over 100. Percent means over 100. Percent means over 100. So, what percent, which means over 100, of means times. Of means times or multiply. 92. That's it, we just have to solve for this equation. So multiply both sides by 100, multiply both sides of the equation by 100, so this 100 drops out, 100 times 100 is 10,000, times 92x, divide both sides by 92, and this 92 drops out and that's your x x equals 1000 over 92. Now listen carefully what I'm about to say. What I'm about to do is something that is against my belief, that's against my way of doing things, but because of the fact that now they are allowing you to use the calculator on the exam, therefore the design of the exam is such a way that there are some instances where it is just more efficient to just reach for the calculator on the screen and use that. Ordinarily in the old exam, there was no need for calculator, the, the problems were not designed that way. Here, instead of trying to do it out manually, just use the calculator on the screen and figure it out as to what it works out to be. And you will see that the answer turns out to be 10,000 divided by 92 turns out to be 108.7, rather 108.7. Six nine five seven. Now you have to take a deep breath, slow down, and ask yourself exactly how is the question phrased. 
on the top of the box it says give your answer to the nearest 0.1% on page 128 on the top of the box you must pay attention to the labels next to the box which is a percentage sign and on the top there is a notation it says give your answer to the nearest 0.1% this answer when it is given to the nearest 0.1% because it's 0.69 it has to be the nearest 0.1% would be the 0.7 so the answer here is the answer here is 108.7 if you type in if you type in 108.69 or if you type in 108.6 you will get no credit for it it has to be exactly like this and no other form no other notation will be accepted 100.6957 will not be accepted 100.69 will not be accepted and so forth the answer is 108.7 which is rounded to the next Round is to the round it to the nearest 0.1 percent. That's it. So that was the answer. I will see you tomorrow on day number 24, where we'll do the last problem in the series that you see there, question number three on the same page. All right. See you then.